everyone. Welcome back to the White Rose Maths Problems of the Days. We're going to be looking at day seven today. So do make sure you've had an attempt at these questions before you watch the video, or if you haven't got the sheets, use the link below or pause it when I bring up the questions. So let's crack on with the orange day seven questions. So we've got here question one using a pictogram, which remember is a way of representing data. In this pictogram, it says the pictogram shows the number of children who walk to school each day. So we have Monday and some blue circles, Tuesday, some blue circles and a semicircle at the end, Wednesday, some blue circles, and then the really important thing, the key. So we are told that one blue circle represents two children. There are 20 children in this class. So how many children did not walk to school on Tuesday. Okay, so there's lots of information in here. Let's think about what we know. Well, we know that one blue circle is actually, actually the same as two of the children in that class. So that represents two students, one blue circle. So on Tuesday, we have at the end here this semicircle. Or another way of saying that is that we have cut our circle in half. So if a whole blue circle represents two children, half a blue circle represents half that amount. So we need to split this group of two into two equal groups, which is one. So half a circle represents one student. Okay. So now we need to do some counting on Tuesday. We need to figure out how many children walk to school on Tuesday. Because we have been asked how many did not walk. So let's have a look at the blue circles. Well, if we remember that each circle is two children, we could count up in twos to help us. So we have two, four, six, eight, ten. And then we remember that at the end is half a circle, so it's one student. So 10 plus 1 is 11. So we know that 11 walked on Tuesday. We could check that by counting the circles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We know that each is worth 2. And we could do our times tables. 5 lots of 2 is 10, or 2 lots of 5 is 10. And then add one on 11. OK. So we know that 11 students walk to school on Tuesday, but we're still not there because we need to know how many did not walk. So now we need to think, what else does the question tell us? Well, we know that there are 20 students in this class. So I'm going to go back to my bar model and say, well, there's 20 students in the class. I'm going to split it up into walk and didn't walk. And if I knew that 11 walked, Using my maths knowledge, my bonds knowledge, I know that that's a bit bigger than halfway. So I'm going to draw my line a bit bigger for walk, and I'm going to write in 11, and then not walk is our question mark. So we have 20 students, 11 walked. How many did not walk? Well, now it looks really familiar to lots of questions we've been doing throughout the week where we know we are looking for a part, 20 is the whole, 11 is a part, what is the missing part? We will do a subtraction to find the difference. So 20 take away 11, or I'm going to count up from 11 to 20, and I'm gonna use my knowledge of number bonds, because I'm trying to get to the next 10, what do I need to add on to one? That's right, nine, so 11 add nine is 20, so nine students did not walk to school on the Tuesday. OK, let's have a look at question two on the orange. There are only two questions, not three this time. So we have been told here that these pairs of numbers all have the same total. So in the first picture there, we have two cards, one with a 50 and one with a 30. Then we've got some sets beneath it where one number is missing but we know that they all have the same total. So what do you think we need to work out first? That's it, we need to work out the total of the pair where we have both numbers. 
So instead of drawing it out like that, I'm going to draw it out using either a part whole model or in my case, a bar model. So I am going to draw out my bar. I'm going to write in my 50 and my 30. And I know that I want to figure out the whole or the total. So this time we have one part is 50, another part is 30. What is the whole? So to figure out the total, we know we need to do an addition, 50 plus 30. Well, I'm going to write this out in column form and I'm going to notice the fact that because they both have a zero in the units column, it's almost just like doing five plus three and I know that one is eight. So I now know that the total of my parts or the whole is 80. So now when we go down to the other pairs of cards, I could draw out two more bars and they're the same length because we're still working to a total of 80. So this bar is split into something and 20. So I'm going to put 20 in here. I'm going to put a question mark in here. Now, can we remember if we don't have both the parts, if we're trying to find a part, we do a subtraction. So 80 take away 20 equals our part. And just like before, I can do in my head, eight take away two is six. So 80 take away 20 must be 60. So we can also see here that as we've gone 10 down on the green side, we've got 10 up on the red side. Okay, now the last bar, the whole is 80, so if we split it into parts and 80 is one part, well, 80 and 80, do I need to put anything or any other part with the 80 to make it reach 80? It's already the same. So my other part is going to have to be zero because I don't need another block on my bar model. So we will show you this one using our part whole model so you can see both numbers. But if we split 80, the whole, into two parts, if 80 is one part, zero must be the other part. So 60 and zero are your answers here. Okay, well done. So let's move on to the blue questions from day seven. So we're back to representing data but instead of a pictogram this time, where we use pictures to show numbers, we've got a bar chart. So you can see we have these columns or bars on scales to represent our data. So we have 25 children in a class this time. The bar chart shows the number of children in the class who walk to school each day. Now, we need to know what percentage of the class walked to school on Thursday. So there's going to be a couple of steps here because our question has asked for the answer to be in percentage format. We need to remember what we know about that word percent. We know that percent means out of 100. So there's our percentage symbol. And we remember it means out of 100. OK, well, first of all, they want to know the percentage who walked to school on Thursday. So let's find Thursday's bar and see how many children that was. So we find Thursday on our x axis on the bottom here. And then we look at how far this bar goes up on the y axis. So we use the scale of number of children. So it might be helpful for you if you need to to get a ruler or a piece of paper and put it on the screen or put it on your worksheet so you can really accurately follow along in a straight line, okay? In fact, I might do that on my computer now and I can see that it matches to the 13. So, 13 children walked on Thursday. Okay, 13 children walked on Thursday. How do I get from 13 children to a percentage though? Well, we need to remember that 
percentages being out of 100. It's like we're using our fractions. So if 13 is our numerator, because it's what we're interested in, the children that have walked, what is our denominator going to be? That's right, our denominator is going to be the total children. So how many children were in the class? 25. So you can see if we write our Thursday results as a fraction, we have how many children walked over how many children in total? So 13 over 25. Now this still isn't over 100 to be a nice easy percent. But I'm hoping that lots of you have recognised that 25 is one of our key numbers. What would 25 be if we were talking about fractions or percentages? What do you know that as more commonly? I know that 25% is one quarter because I have remembered there are four lots of 25 in 100. Now that could be really useful because to work out a percent, I want to get my fraction back over 100. And I know there are four lots of 25 in 100. So I'm going to times my denominator by four so that it's now a fraction over 100. But if I times my denominator by four, what do I have to do to my numerator? The same thing. So I'm going to do 13 times four. So we could come over here and do it in our short multiplication. So four times three is 12. So the two goes underneath and we carry over the one. Four times one is four, add the one is five. So 13 times four is 52. So now I'm going to put the 52 over the 100 and now I can easily work out my percent because my fraction is over 100. So 52 over 100 or 52 out of 100 is 52%. If 52% of the children walk to school on Thursday. Now I know that that is a sensible answer because something else I know is that 50% equals half. So 52% is greater than a half. 52% greater than or bigger than a half. What would have half the class been? Half of 25? There's a question for you. Have a go at working that out. And if half is less than the amount of students on Thursday, then we got it right. Okay, part B says, on one of the days it rained. Which day do you think it was? Can you explain to a friend? So this goes back to if we know what answer we want to give, can we justify our answer or prove our answer or explain? Have a think. Looking at all of the bars, we don't seem to have any days where the same number of students walk. It was a bit different each day. But there is one bar that is very different to the others. So have a look and see if you can actually use the scale, maybe use your ruler again, to figure out how many walked each day. I'm going to have a look and say on Monday, there were 16. On Tuesday, 18. On Wednesday, five. Thursday, we've already done is 13. And Friday is 14. So we have 16, 18, five, 13, 14. Which day do you think it rained on? That's right, I would go with it being Wednesday because it is by far the lowest number. And if it's raining, perhaps people didn't want to get wet and walk to school, so they got on the bus or got a lift in the car instead. So this is the day it probably rained because there were many, many less or many, many fewer students who walked. Okay, so let's move on now to question two, the last question of day seven. We have to order the following numbers, starting with the smallest. So we want to go from smallest to largest. Okay, smallest to largest. So we've got three numbers here, but they're all in different formats. 
So our first number, 3.1, we have an integer and a decimal, 3.1. Okay. Then we have what's called an improper fraction. Remember it is called improper or sometimes top heavy because the numerator is bigger than the denominator. And then lastly, we have another fraction, but this time it is a mixed number because we have an integer and a fraction, three and a quarter. So here's our option. Well, to be able to compare these with each other, we need to convert so that we are looking at them all in the same format. The first thing I'm going to do is convert my improper fraction to a mixed number fraction. So let's think how we did this before. Remember we were talking about pizza slices. If I cut each pizza into five slices, how many whole pizzas do I eat? 18 slices. So I'm gonna to need to think about my five times table. Five, 10, 15, 20, oh, 20 is too big. So I can fit in three whole pizzas, which would be 15 slices. Then how many slices would I have left to make my 18? That's right, that's going to be three and three fifths. So I have converted this into three and three fifths. But I still can't compare it directly with this one because this one's in quarters and this one's in fifths. And I can't compare it with this one because this one's a decimal and this one's a fraction. Ah, so the next step is to think about what we know about decimals. Well, what is this column called in our place value? That's right, it's the tenths column. So in other words, 3.1 is three and one tenth. Ah, now I've got this one in fifths. Could we make that into an equivalent fraction in tenths? I think we could. So the amount of holes isn't going to change. So it's still going to be three holes. How do we turn three fifths into tenths? Well, what do we have to do to our denominator, our five, to make it ten? That's right, we are going to times it by two. And we've just said, whatever you do to the bottom of a fraction, you have to do to the top. So our numerator is three, we're gonna times that by two, and that's gonna give us six. So three and three fifths is the same as three and six tenths. So now I think I can convert this to a decimal because I've got it over tenths, which is the name of this column. So six tenths needs a six in this column, 3.6. Okay, so we're getting somewhere now to be able to convert because I now have two numbers as a decimal. So I can compare and see that this one is bigger than this one because it has a six in the tenths instead of a one in the tenths. So now I need to look at this number here, three and a quarter. How can I compare that? Well, some of you might know what a quarter is as a decimal already. You might remember from the last question where I was talking about that 25 and how it's a useful number. So let's think, if I can't turn it into tenths because four is not a factor of 10, can I turn it into something else I know a bit better? Could I go up maybe to 100? because our decimal columns are tenths, then hundredths. I could, couldn't I? So again, I'm going to convert. And this time, three and a quarter is gonna become three and so many hundredths. So how many lots of four go into a hundred? That's right, it's 25. So if I times the bottom by 25, what must I do to the top? That's it, and it's just one. So one times 25 is 25. So now I have three and 25 hundredths. I can convert it into my decimal. Three and 25 hundredths, which is two tenths and five hundredths. So 3.25.
So some of you might have remembered straight away that a quarter is the same as 0.25. Okay, so now I have 3.1, 3.6, 3.25. The last job was to order them smallest to largest. Are they in the right order at the moment? No, they are not. 3.1 is the smallest. But then, if we look at our tenths column, this one has a six. This one has a two. So even though there are more decimal places in this number, we have to compare each place value column at a time. Now, they all have a three in the units column. That's the same. But then this one has a one, this one has a six, and this one has a two in the tenths column. So these need to change their space because 3.25 is smaller than 3.6. So our final order in decimal form would look like 3.1, 3.25, 3.6. And in the original cards, we can see the 3.1 hasn't changed, but the 3.25 would be your three and a quarter card, and the 3.6 would be your 1850 card. So lots of steps in that one. We had to convert from improper to mixed number, we had to find equivalent fractions and convert from fraction to decimal. Then we had to compare decimal sizes. So really well done if you had a go at that question. Okay, so that is everything for day seven questions. Well done. Do make sure to send me some emails if you would like some more questions or if you're finding anything a bit tricky. And I will see you for another video again very soon. Bye bye.